Say squid. Say squid. Say squid. Like a me. My Nissan didn't start yesterday and today is even colder so I decided to charge it a little bit hopefully it's good now let's check Doesn't sound good. Does not sound good. Minus four today, that's why. Okay, let it warm up. here before it's open and already the parking lot is full is this the line man pretty big Alright guys, I'm going to be narrating a little in this video because I felt uncomfortable talking out loud uh, in front of so many people around me and especially when I had something negative to say so I couldn't always talk uh, when I was taping This one is colorful Okay, let's go over the bolts real quick, but uh, keep in mind that even though I have a bolt myself, I really don't know much about bolts, so uh, don't put much weight in my opinions on bolts, okay? There were bolts from Crestliner, Tracker, Alumacraft, G3 bolts, Smokercraft, Lund, Lowy, and even Ranger, but I did not look at any bass bolts because I have no interest in those. Uh, I only looked at the deep V bolts. Now, through my eyes, Crestliner, Tracker, Alumacraft, G3 Bolts and Lowy look almost the same. Uh, even though G3 Bolts uh, is the only one of this bunch that uh, comes with Yamaha motor, but inside it's the same carpet, the same chairs, the same cheap plastic on the dashboard and the same mercury on the back. Nice wheels and trailer. Here is Tracker. Uh, from this bunch I like Tracker the most, not because it has any advantage, but at least it has a great price. And I must underline there is a big gap in price between Tracker and everybody else. Tracker is by far the best price in the boat show. Now Lund in my opinion had a little bit uh, nicer materials than the rest of the pack. And also the fit and finish of the build uh, looked better. And uh, in general, the Lund boat design appears to have uh, a little bit more detail than the competition. The dashboard, for example, has metal where others are plastic. It would also have uh, soft touch materials in a lot of places. And just some more details overall. But the one thing uh, that is a significant uh, drawback about Lund boats is their outrageous price. This 19 footer here with 150 horsepower Mercury was 62,000 before the rebates. And that had no special, you know, sonars or anything like that. The bolts that were definitely standing out, at least through my eyes at the show, were Smokercraft. These guys do everything a little bit different. 
the colors are different, there are LEDs everywhere, the seats are different. They put soft materials on places where the competition has just bare metal. The floor, the carpets, all the surfaces, the storage departments, everything looks a little bit different on these Smokercraft boats. Top, top quality products. What you don't see on our boats is better than what you do see. And that's things like uh, pressure treated wood in the floors that's got a lifetime warranty. All welded framework underneath the floor to stiffen up the bottom. On top of that, the prices were really good in my opinion. They cost something similar to what you'd pay for a G3 or a Lowy boat. Uh, but are nicer than those in my opinion and uh, definitely much cheaper than uh, Lund or a Lumacraft. Look at this enormous vessel here. Look how much space you have. Okay, look how thick the walls are. This is not your, you know, regular jump boat. This thing comes with the 115 horsepower Mercury. Uh, it has the catfish uh, rod rack installed already very clean you know design inside nothing to trip and this whole thing cost thirty six thousand dollars and that's before any kind of discount at all now that's a pretty good deal to me it looks like the perfect catfish rig to How me how long is this thing i saw some kayaks too even though i've never stepped on a kayak and i know absolutely nothing about them but uh, some of them were pretty interesting like this guy here it's like a pontoon kayak and uh, while I'm generally afraid of getting on a kayak I think I would have the courage to, to try to use one of these. Definitely looks really stable and some good materials too. However, none of the kayaks at the show were even remotely comparable to a hobby. And again, I don't know anything about kayaks, but everything on these hobbies looks amazing. There is no cheap plastic anywhere on this thing. Everything you touch has some special texture. There are rubbers everywhere to make soft touch on a kayak. Everything is made with so much detail. I mean, there's, I've, I saw so many different uh, types of materials on the seat alone. You know, I don't care about kayaks, but I have nothing but professional admiration for the designers of these things. If uh, one day I do get a kayak, I hope I can save and uh, buy one of these. And then we have this thing, and uh, you tell me if this is a boat or a kayak. Look at this big thing on the left. It can sit, I don't know, three or maybe even more people. And everything that you see on the left is actually folded and the guy on the right is holding it. I mean, even if you don't have any place to store a boat or even a kayak, how much space does this uh, take to store? And you can put this even in a car. You don't even need a pickup truck to transport this. <laughs> have you seen our stuff before? No, so but... You know, how many different kinds of warm can you make? Right. <laughs> it I'm, is a warm. Right. But what's different about ours is that we incorporate salt and scent, but maintain a good buoyancy to still stand up. So that's what we're showing here. So traditionally in the plastic market, when, when companies put salt in the bait, it lays down on the bottom mm -hmm. and it weighs them down. But guys want to know that they have a worm that has really good action. So we, what's cool about ours is we make them with salt and scent. But as you can see in the tank, see in the tank across here, that he still stands up. Oh yeah. And that's what makes it really unique is that they're salted, scented, yeah. and they still stand right up. Oh. Boyan, yeah. definitely boyan. Yeah, absolutely. So that's so, what makes um, ours yeah, good. Uh, you know, I taped a little bit of everything because I love you and I want to show you, you know, a flavor of what the entire event looks like. But I personally don't care about anything I showed you so far. I came to see the fishing tackle. So let's start looking at some rods and reels because I'm nine minutes in this video and haven't shown you anything nice yet. Oh, look at this. Looks, looks vintage. I love this. I immediately fell in love with this rod. It has an amazing blank uh, with a lot of flex, very different from your typical, you know, super stiff bass rod. And the colors are just a dream for the carp angler, but unfortunately they put those tiny micro guides all the way to the tip, 
So this rod can never be adapted for carp fishing or other bottom fishing. The other St. Croix rod that I really liked was Icon Trolling. Not the regular version, but the trolling version. That rod was actually introduced in 2016, but uh, now was the first time that I saw it. However, the rod has perfect blank, it has the eye fish blank, it has perfect guides, perfect handle, uh, perfect color, and one of the very few trolling rods that have a trigger. I hate uh, rods without a trigger. The Shimano boot was unfortunately a total waste of time. No new rods, no new reels. Well, actually there was a couple of new bass rods that are quite stiff and very expensive. But yeah, nothing new at the Shimano boot. The only rod that has an eye fish blank is the scimitar. Uh, but that's a, an, an old rod. But if you look for a carp or catfish uh, rod from Shimano, take a look at the Shimano scimitar. Very nice blank. No new reels, like I said, but the Shimano Sahara is still the best reel on the market, in my opinion, for catfish and carp, uh, in terms of value, of course. Don't even bother looking at the other reels from Shimano. That's how good the Sahara is. Remember, the Sedona is actually Shimano Sahara without one of the bearings on the pinion gear, which uh, is a very important bearing and you're really better off paying the extra 10 bucks for the Sahara. And then the Nasky is also Shimano Sahara, but with seals that you don't need if you fish fresh water. So it's not worth spending the extra $30 for Nasky if you fish fresh water because it's exactly the same reel with the same part numbers inside. Daiwa wow. has a better boot than Shimano, I'll tell you that. Nice clicker. Smooth. Nice clicker. That one actually had quite a few reels and rods that were not here last year. This Daiwa Eliminator that I'm holding right now, for example, is relatively new. But uh, I don't recommend it at the current price. I have a detailed review on my channel if you want to see it, but it's pretty much a Daiwa BG without a couple of bearings, the screwing handle and the seals. Right now these two reels cost about the same because the Daiwa BG is always on sale and you're really better off buying the BG because it's the full package. But if you see the Eliminator $30 or more cheaper than the BG, then go with the Eliminator because the extra bearings that the BG has are actually not on important locations. The screen handle doesn't make a big difference and the seals don't matter at all for fresh water. Another new reel for this year was the Revros LT, but I don't recommend this one either. The Revros LT is a pure Legalis LT with one of the bearings on the pinion gear removed. Just like the case with Sedona and Sahara, uh, it's not a good idea to save 10 bucks and lose a bearing on the pinion gear. The Legalis LT, like I've said before, is the best value in finesse fishing in the history of fishing tackle period. It actually feels better in your hand than the $200 Ballistic LT because it doesn't have the resistance of all of these extra seals that I don't need for fresh water. The new Daiwa Rayoga that I just reviewed on my channel was here of course, but I'm not gonna talk about it here, just go watch the video on my channel. I talked about it in more detail than you will find anywhere on YouTube. And uh, finally I got to touch the best fishing reel at this show the new Daiwa exists. I've seen so many videos of this reel on YouTube and I've waited so long to try it that uh, I was a little nervous before I grab it because you know I was afraid that it would disappoint me. And if you're new to my channel I have about 40 Daiwa reels and I have more Daiwa reels than all the other brands combined. So I think it's pretty safe to say that I hold no grudge against Daiwa. However this reel did disappoint me. I didn't feel any magic whatsoever. Yeah, it's perfectly smooth and very light and just ridiculously shiny and reflective of light. 
but at $800 I expect to feel something special and I just didn't feel anything special about this reel. I definitely didn't like the sound of the drag and at this price I expect the drag sound to be vibrant like a guitar string. I know what I'm gonna tell you now will sound absurd, but if you compare this $800 reel to the $50 Daiwa Legalis LT, there is no significant difference in smoothness. This reel is perfectly smooth to be sure, but the Daiwa Legalis is almost perfectly smooth too. There is just not much improvement left to be made in terms of smoothness anymore. If you're someone really sensitive, you can tell this reel is a little bit tighter. There is no free play at the handle or the handle knob and maybe the rotor is a little bit better balanced. But we're really talking about tiny differences that not everybody will detect. And the same thing with regards to resistance to spinning. Very little difference between this one and the Legalis LT. Maybe because this one was higher gear ratio uh, than the Legalis LT and the gear ratio, the high gear ratio does create extra resistance. But I'm telling you, the Legalis LT is one of the lightest reels to spin regardless of price. I'm sure the reel is mechanically amazing inside, but that was cheap reels have become so good that it's becoming more and more difficult for the flagship reels to impress you when you, you know, grab them in your hand. Daiwa also had a couple of new bass reels and I tried those but for the life of me I couldn't tell any difference between any of them. I think because bait casters have no rotor they have no resistance at all at the shop and it's just not possible to tell the difference between them without the fish on the line. Daiwa actually had a lot of rods that I liked and that were under or around a hundred bucks but I'm gonna have to make a separate video about those because there were so many rods that I liked that, you know, it will take me 30 minutes just talking about the diver rods alone. Okay, stay with me a few more minutes because I really want to show you some of the other vendors. This guy here, for example, from Razor Rods was quite interesting. Everything he sold started from $200, even though you couldn't find any expensive components on these rods. No fancy guides, the bass and the catfish rods were very heavy, and the crappy rods had very slow recovery and the cork, you know, the same cork handle that you will find in any non-remarkable rod on the market. After playing with Daiwa, Shimano and St. Croix rods for two hours, this stuff felt like, you know, 40, 50 dollar rods to me and yet they were MSRP at 200, so that was quite an interesting experience. Arden. And talking about interesting experiences, this was my first time trying Ardent reels. I've heard of them before, and a lot actually, and I was quite curious to try them. And I did try and look at all of the reels they had on the table. I hate to say it, but I think all of these reels were relabeled Chinese OEM reels. I could be wrong, and I'm definitely not an expert, but I bought a lot of eBay reels and I have a pretty sharp eye about these things. And I'm willing to put 10 bucks that this is uh, Chinese OEM stuff. They had some fishing line though that looked unique to me. It was a hybrid between mono and braid and I've never seen anything like it, which was confusing because if they just resell Chinese stuff, where did they get this unique fishing line? Anyway, it will remain a mystery to me. Another interesting vendor was Onigma. These guys sold both rods and reels and everything seemed to start at around $150, so quite pricey. The rods, again, no fancy guides, the blanks were too heavy, I really don't know who would buy these things at these prices. If you just go to the adjacent Shimano booth and try the Shimano Zodias or the Shimano Kurado bass rods, I mean, it's not like they're on the next level. It's like the Shimano rods are two or three levels above this. The reels, again, I'm pretty sure were just relabeled, you know, Chinese OEM stuff. Although I have to say this felt and looked like the higher end OEM than what Ardent was selling. The Ardent reels really, you know, felt cheap $20 eBay stuff to me. 
These reels looked and felt pretty nice actually and I couldn't find anything wrong with them except the you know $150 price tag. But I don't want you to think that I'm singling these companies out because this is what everybody is doing today. Selling relabeled OEM stuff has been the name of the game in the last, I don't know, 5 or 10 years. I know companies a lot bigger than this whose business consists almost entirely of reselling relabeled OEM stuff. So there is nothing wrong with this and uh, these resellers do provide competition to the real companies after all. Also don't forget that this is still a free country and anybody can do whatever they want. But on the other hand, you know, that's why we watch, you know, reviews on YouTube and we try to navigate in this, you know, new ocean of new brands out there. And on that note, I'm gonna end this video. I hope everyone found something useful or at least interesting. If you have any questions about tackle that I showed in this video, please leave me a comment. If you want to support my channel, please give this video a like. And uh, everybody else, thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.